it actually smells like a dessert. If you wear this, you will smell like a dessert. You'll smell good enough to eat. Good morning, guys, and welcome back to my channel. So today I have a PR perfume haul to share with you. So these are all fragrances I have received complimentary from various companies, and I wanted to share them with you today, let you know which ones for me are hits or misses. And this also includes the first ever men's fragrance that I will be purposely reviewing on my channel. So let me know down below if that's something you guys are interested in, and I will do a little bit more men's fragrance related videos. And also, if this is your first time on my channel, Channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. My name is Alithia and on this channel we do talk mostly about perfume. We also do a little bit of minimalism, organization, decluttering, things like that. So if you enjoy that kind of stuff, I would love if you would head on down and hit the subscribe button. And without further ado, let's jump right in. Okay, so the first fragrance we're going to chat about today is from M. Mikalef, and M. Mikalef did kindly send this over to me complimentary, so thank you so much to them for taking the time out of their day and also for sending me over this beautiful fragrance. So this one is called Pure Extreme Nectar, I believe, or Pure Nectar, Pure Nectar Extreme, and this is a beautiful, fresh, rosy scent that's really nice for the summertime, and it's very reminiscent to me of Chloe Eau de Parfum, just the original Chloe. It's also a little bit similar to me. It smells almost along the veins of Dolce & Gabbana light blue. So not that it smells exactly like them, but I think if you like Chloe the original, then this would be something that you might be interested in. Before we get into my impressions of it, let's talk about the notes really quickly. So in the opening, you have Rose and Magnolia. In the middle, you have Jasmine. And in the base, you have Precious Woods, Amber, and White Musk. So first, I want to just show you a close-up of the beautiful bottle. I absolutely love the M. Mikalef fragrances because there is so much art and so much extravagance that goes into the planning of these fragrances. Everything from the bottles down to the packaging. Every time you order from the house, I'm just blown away at how beautifully packaged and presented everything is. So my impression of this one, like I say, it's kind of similar to Chloe, kind of similar to Light Blue. I have to be honest, it's not my absolute favorite scent. It's not one that I think I would reach for very often. And it's just a very pleasant, classy, fresh daytime floral scent and it really does smell a lot to me a lot to me like the original Chloe I would say this one is not quite as citrusy this one smells a little bit more mature lasting power on this is really good um, when I had sprayed this on my arm it was on my skin all day long but I sort of do find that for me it's a little bit more mature it's a little too mature for me I find that the house of M. Mikalef in general has a lot of more mature, sort of rich, luxurious smelling fragrances. If you want perfumes that kind of smell like class and a little bit like old money, that kind of thing, that's really what the house of Mikalef gives me. And I find that to be with all of their fragrances, whether they're men, women's, um, even Elaine and Gold, which I do really like and I think is beautiful. Even that one has a little bit of a mature touch to it, if you know what I mean. Yeah, they're just very, very classy and I think mature is the best way to put it. So this is kind of like um, a little bit more woody, deeper, less citrusy, kind of a Chloe fragrance. So that is Pure Nectar Extreme from M. Mikalef. So the next one we'll talk about is in this beautiful bottle. This is from Givenchy and this was also sent to me complimentary. So this is Givenchy Irresistible Eau de Toilette. And I don't know if you guys remember, but I did have the, ir the Irresistible Eau de Parfum, which came out in 2020. So this is the Eau de Toilette version. And what I can say about both of them right off the hop is both of them are really nice, easy, grab and go fragrances. They're just easy grab and go summertime daytime fragrances that you wouldn't have to think about. You can just grab them and put on and you're going to smell pretty and you're going to smell like you're wearing just a nice perfume. Um, personally, I don't think either of them are like wow factor perfumes. I find them to be a very sort of basic everyday floral scent, which there's nothing wrong with that. Of course, we all need a basic everyday floral fragrance. So um, if you're looking for that, this might be something that you might be interested in. So the notes that you have in here is rose and cassis in the opening. In the mid, you have damask rose and iris. And in the base, you have white musk and Virginia cedar. This one in comparison to the Eau de Parfum is a lot more rose centric. The Eau de Parfum actually was a little bit more fresh and fruity, but they do smell very, very similar. But this one is definitely a little bit more heavy on the rose. I do want to give you kind of a close up of the bottle because the bottle is absolutely stunning. This is just such a pretty, light, 
easy scent. That's what it is. It's just a pretty light, easy scent. Very, very inoffensive. This would be perfect for the office. This would be a perfect scent to wear if you're looking for something that is not offensive, um, you know, isn't going to bother anyone. Yeah, it's, it's honestly, it's just a pretty easy grab and go is what it is. It's very rose centric. I think the lasting power on this is actually okay too because I have had this on my skin and I was able to smell it all throughout the day. I haven't really given it a proper, proper wear, um, but yeah, it's it's just one of those easy grab and go perfumes. Is it a wow factor perfume? I don't think so. It is a really pretty perfume. So that's really all I have to say about Givenchy Irresistible. Um, beautiful light fragrance for the summer and also absolutely gorgeous packaging, so. The next one that we're going to talk about is from Juliana's Perfume. This is the newest release from Juliana's Perfume. And as you guys know, I do work with the company. So they do send me their fragrances to review for you as they come out. And this one is called Call Me By Your Name. And this is supposed to be a dupe for Guerlain's Gourmand Coquin. Coquin? I'm not sure if I'm saying that properly. I'll put it on the screen for you. I really like Juli Juliana's Perfumes. They are an inspired fragrance house that does very, very close dupes, basically, of a lot of higher end fragrances that you would otherwise pay an arm and a leg for. So they're an amazing house if you're trying to get the look for less, so to speak. And a lot of their fragrances are very spot on, um, very, very close to the original. Of course, they're not 100% the original, but a lot of them are very, very similar. This one, I have to say, is probably one of my lesser favorite from the house not because there's anything wrong with the fragrance, just because the scent profile itself is not quite for me. But I'm telling you guys, if you like gourmand fragrances, if you like chocolate, if you like chocolatey, powdery fragrances, you will love this one. This is a gourmand overdose. It is so strong, it is so powdery, it is so decadent. It actually smells like a dessert. If you wear this, you will smell like a dessert. You'll smell good enough to eat. So I did spray a little bit in the cap here. Oh my gosh, you guys. I may very well change my mind about this one actually. It's intense. It is, it is a very intense, chocolatey, powdery, gourmand overdose it reminds me a little bit of um it reminds me a little bit of chocolate greedy from montal which you guys know i love i love chocolate greedy i find that one to be so enjoyable this one i think also has a sex appeal to it i think this is a great nighttime perfume again you guys if you want to smell good enough to eat if you want to smell like a chocolate pastry or a chocolate dessert of some sort but with a little a little elevated sort of a element of class and a lot of powder again i don't know exactly what notes are in here this is just this is a gourmand overdose, a chocolate bomb. And yeah, honestly, a lot of you guys will love this. Like it's a little too chocolatey for me, if I'm being perfectly honest, just because as you guys know, I don't, I, I don't like a straight up gourmand scent. I don't like a gourmand that is too much like an actual food. It's the same reason I can't wear Lyra from Zerzhov. So that's just my personal preference. And I'm always going to be honest with you guys, of course, but I think that I think a lot of people will love this, especially if you like gourmand fragrances. This is definitely one to check out. And I have not smelt the real Guerlain fragrance, the gourmand coquin, co co I'm not sure how to say it. But if it's any testament to how Juliana's perfume has been so far, it will be very, very close. So yeah, and they do last forever, very affordable. I will have everything linked in the description box down below. If you guys are interested in checking out Juliana's perfume, everything will be linked down below for you. And the last one we're gonna talk about today, you guys, is actually a man's fragrance or it's marketed toward men. Of course, anyone can wear anything. This is definitely um, a little masculine, but you guys, I have to say, this is my favorite one out of this haul today. I love this fragrance. So this is Gentleman by Givenchy and this is the Gentleman Eau de Toilette Intense. This is so, this smells so good, you guys. This is very sexy. It's also, I would almost say unisex. It's really a shame that the bottle is very masculine and of course it's called Gentleman because if this was a more, um, unisex targeted scent. I could almost keep this. I'm not even kidding with you. This smells so good. Okay, so the notes that you have in here are cardamom, basil, and bergamot in the opening, and there's lots of cardamom, which as you guys know, one of my favorite notes of all time. In the middle, you have iris and cypress, so that cypress, I think, is what really gives it that manly accord. If it wasn't for the cypress, I think this would be a perfectly unisex fragrance. And then in the base, you have coumarin and cedar. 
and this smells to me like a powdery version of Gris Charnel. So if you take Gris Charnel and you make it a little bit less creamy and you add in some cypress and you make it a little fresher in the opening, that's kind of what this is. And I have to tell you guys, Gris Charnel is a fragrance that I think is amazing. I think it is so well done. It's a masterpiece. I think it's beautiful. It's one that sometimes I think, do I need that one? Should I buy that one? Like, it's amazing. Gris Charnel is amazing. I will say that. I just don't know if it's one I can wear. But anyway, I digress. This smells to me in the same vein as Gris Charnel. And I think it is the iris and the cardamom and the cedar probably that does it for me. Um, my boyfriend isn't a huge fan of this one. I let him try it and I let him spray it on his skin and my gosh, does it smell good. Like on a man, this is good. This would be an amazing office scent. You could almost, you could even wear this for a date. I think it's powdery and sensual enough. You can wear it for a date. Um, it has a bit of a freshness in the opening that is so beautiful and so enticing. The cypress in there gives it that masculinity that I love. You guys, I'm obsessed with men's cologne. Like sometimes I wish I would have been born a man because I sometimes think men's cologne is so much better than women's fragrances. They're just so good and they're usually such beasts. They usually last forever. Um, so let me just take the lid off of here. I think this is also a very uh, classy fragrance for men. If there's any guys watching or you're looking for a really great gift for somebody in your life, your son, your brother, your husband, your boyfriend, whoever, that man in your life, your dad, I mean, honestly, anybody can wear this. It's not really a clubby type of a scent. I wouldn't say like 21 year olds who are going out to the club and whatever. It's definitely not a clubby scent. It's definitely a classy, sophisticated scent. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. <laughs> mm, it smells so nice. It smells so nice. It's woody. It's powdery. It's a little bit fresh. It's got that iris, which makes it like a little lipsticky, like kind of sensual, warm. It's just, it's a beautiful, beautiful scent. I'm actually going to spray the lid again because it's kind of addictive and I want to smell it again. <laughs> Have it in the lid here. It's so good, you guys. The opening is so good. I could almost wear this. I honestly could almost wear this. Sometimes I wonder, would it be too masculine if I wore this? I don't know. You guys, oh my gosh, it's good. Mm. Comment down below if you are a woman and you have a man's fragrance that you like to wear. Comment down below and tell me which man's fragrance you actually wear. Um, I think there's a few that definitely people can get away from and I've heard of women wearing men's colognes all the time. I just, like personally for me, I have learned lately that I like to smell feminine. I've learned that I want to smell sweet, I want to smell floral, I want to smell flirtatious, I don't want to smell too masculine, and a lot of times unisex perfumes for me, I'm realizing I love them, but I love them more on a man. But there's still something about them, you know, they just they just smell so good and so sexy and it makes you want to wear them. So yeah, this is a this is a really good one. I would say this is very classy, it has good lasting power, even for being an eau de toilette. I feel like men's fragrances just tend to last a long time. Um, yeah, so this is a good one. This is a good one to check out, I think. And I mean, I don't talk about men's fragrances very often. Let me know down below if you'd like to see me talk about more men's fragrances. I can definitely do that. Um, I just obviously won't be blind buying a bunch of them because I'm not going to wear them. And my boyfriend is very particular about what he wears. He has like his top favorites and those are the ones he sticks to. So I can't get them and give them all to him. He won't wear them. He's very, very picky. He just likes a fresher scent. He doesn't like the sweet, powdery um, you know, cardamom. He doesn't like spicy. He really likes those fresher scents. So anyway, this is a good one. This is, I would say this is like an eight or nine out of 10 for me for colognes. It's really, really nice and almost could be a unisex fragrance, I think. So that is Gentleman Intense, the Eau de Toilette from Givenchy. So that's it for today's perfume haul, you guys. I hope that you enjoyed hearing my thoughts on these fragrances, and I would really like to know down below if you've smelled any of them and what your thoughts are. And if you haven't already, feel free to head on over and follow me on Instagram as well, where I share a lot of little tidbits of my life that you're not going to see here on YouTube. And I will see you guys all very soon in my next video. Bye for now. <laughs>